This video would focus on 2D trick, on how to answer questions that has unknown and known values. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about right now. So let's get into it. So let's get into it. So when working with 2D trick, you need to understand the concept of sign rule and cost rule. We talked about this in the previous video. So if you haven't watched it um, up there, there is a card where you can click on it and rewatch that before watching this again. But if you understand what sign rule and cost rule is, you definitely understand how to work with 2D trick because we're going to be combining stuff like that in here. Now, you also need to understand the concept of Sokotwa. You also need to know what Pythagoras is because you can also use that in 2D trick. We are going to start with tricks with known values whereby there is a specific value and you need to get the answer. So you need an answer at the end of it. That's the first example we're going to talk about right now. So this question asks us to find BC. This is a classic example of 2D trick. You are trying to find this side that you have over here. Now, for you to determine the value for BC, BC is in triangle ABC. And in triangle ABC, there isn't enough information for you to calculate the value for BC. However, if you can calculate the value for AC, which is connected to both ABC and ADC, we're going to take AC as a bridge to help us get information from ADC and use it in ABC. In turn, we'll be able to calculate our value for BC. We go about this. The first thing we'll do is determine the value for AC. So we start with that. How do we calculate the value for AC? Now, looking at this over here, I notice I could use sine rule to calculate it. And the reason why I'm thinking of sine rule is because this would be a pair and this will be another pair. If I can calculate the value for C1, so C1 and 12 will be one side angle pair, while D and AC would be another pair. So the first thing I would do is I calculate the value for C1. I notice these two lines are parallel, so that automatically tells me that this angle we have for A1 would be 30 degrees. Now, true interior angles of a triangle, adding up to 180, it gives me my value for C1. So let's write all that down. So the first thing I have is... So C1 is 45 degrees. Then we can use the sine rule with the pair that we have over here. So with this, we have AC at 16,39. So the length of AC is 16,39. Now that we have the length of AC, we could use another sign rule to help us figure out BC, meaning this would definitely be an angle side pair while since we are trying to get BC it must also be included in one of the pairs that will also be a pair. Now we can figure out the value from for A2 by sum of angles in a triangle also. Then with this we can now do side row. And your value for BC would be 18,37. So that is 2D trig with values. Now, what happens if you have 2D trigs without value? Now, you need to treat it the same way. Now, I know they are different, but you still need to use the same rules that you use in the first example in this example. The second example we're going to talk about is the exact same thing. The only difference is that I swapped out the values with things like theta, alpha, beta, and that's what you will notice I'm talking about in this section of the video. If I do sum of angles for triangles in numbers, I need to also do the same thing. I need to replicate that in this one 
and still do some of angles in a triangle, right? Even though I do not know what the actual value is. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let us get into the second example, right? Whereby we're using 2D trig without values, but unknown values. Okay. So we have this question here, which says, show that BC is equal to X times sine beta times sine theta plus alpha over sine alpha plus beta times sine theta. Now, as you can see, this question looks exactly the same as the one we did just now. The only difference is that while there was numbers in there, we have unknowns entirely, right? You have no values in the entire question, but you treat it exactly the same way. Like in the previous one, we said AC was our bridge. If you're going to get AC, we understand that this here would be alpha. It is alpha because that is alternate angle. So the first thing I'm going to be writing down is A1 is equals to C2, which is equals to alpha. And the reason is alternate angles. Now that we know alpha, we'll try to find what our C1 is. To calculate C1, we'll use some of angles in a triangle. So in triangle ADC, we understand that that's your interior angles of a triangle so therefore it means that c1 is equals to so c1 is equals to 180 minus alpha plus beta so now we have the value for c1 now with that we can do sine rule we can do sine rule because we have a full pair which is c1 and x and we have an unknown pair which is beta and since we're trying to get ac that's the two we will be focusing on. Working with sign rule, this is what we're going to get. So we have this as sine 180 minus alpha plus beta over x is equal to sine alpha over ac using the concept of sign rule. Now there's something we notice. We have this here as 180 minus alpha plus beta. Now this kind of reminds me of 180 minus theta. And using reduction formula, whenever you have sine 180 minus theta is the same thing as writing sine theta. So therefore, I could rewrite this as, due to the concept of reduction, and that's what I'm gonna have left. Then to get AC, I cross multiply. And that would be the answer for AC. The next thing we're going to do here is to determine BC. Now, we could also find the value for A2 because we'll need it. Interior angles of a triangle, right? The sum of interior angles of a triangle makes up 180. So that's why your value for A2 is that. So we can do sine rule again because we have one side angle pair and we have an unknown in the second side angle pair so with that we can find this this will be written as so then we'll reduce sine 180 minus theta plus alpha so is in the second quadrant we bring it back to the first so you're going to have down cross multiply. So in the final step over here, so we just replace our value for AC. And therefore your BC will be X times sine beta times sine theta plus alpha over sine theta times sine alpha plus beta. And that is exactly what they ask us to prove, as you can see over there. And that's it. So in 2D trig, one very important thing I really need to echo again is the concept of the bridge. In most 2D triangles, there's usually going to be a bridge whereby it is a barrier between the triangle in which there's the most information and the triangle in which there's the least information. But you actually need an angle, you actually need the side from that 
um, other triangle. And that's exactly what you normally do in 2D Trig. There are other videos on Trig in the description, right? Try as much as possible if you can to check it out and also other videos in our channel and on your way out please don't forget to like and subscribe very grateful thank you